What's up? It's Rain or Shine Wolfden Podcast. How you doing? I hope you're good. I'm good. Will, are you good? I am. I am okay. All I right. got a. I got another installment, and in everyone's favorite long going long uh, long term series on this podcast. Something's wrong with Will's PC handheld. <laughs> okay. Let's just start off the show with that. Sure, why not? If you want to like sure. say thank you to everybody while I oh, okay. unzip this sure. bad boy. Uh, not my penis, my Steam Deck. GRC, whatever. Thank you for the Prime. Edward Bova, thanks for the 17 months. Hi, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Edward? Jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for 37 months. J- Majin Jameson, thanks for the 27 months. Uh, I feel like it's been longer. Uh, Brandon, thanks for the 27, 28 Canadian dollars. I don't know oh. what the math is, but hey, Bob, a couple weeks ago, I asked about my RG35 is not working well. I ended up swapping the SD card with an empty one and then swapped it back. Now it works for some reason. Just wanted to say thanks for the help. That's really weird. Uh, and also, howdy, Will. Hey. And Brandon, thanks for the seven Canadian dollars, you Canadians, you Canucks watching us. Uh, also, Will, I'm a huge fan of the Flash, I even have the logo tattooed. Do you have any good comic suggestions? Uh, not the movies, I'll tell you that for sure. Any- I, everybody hated Flashpoint. I liked Flashpoint. Flashpoint, yeah, Flashpoint, the comic book, is not a good starting point for the Flash. A really good starting point for the Flash is any Flash comic written by Mark Wade. Doesn't matter which one. Doesn't matter if it's the middle of a story or whatever. Just any Flash comic written by Mark Wade, uh, it, is, it is a damn good time. And I know he's a little less popular, but like Jeff Johns, anything he did is fantastic. I really liked his story, The Dastardly Death of the Rogues. Check that one out. I like Francis Manipult's art. Yes, he did the art on Jeff Johns's Flash. Okay, we'll so read that one. There you go. All right. So this guy, this is my Steam Deck. Hi, I put a Batman skin on it. I like Batman. Um, <laughs> I didn't charge it for a long time. I killed the battery. Yes. So I plugged it in. I charged it. Pause. Yes. Did you use the charger that came with it? No, I used the U Green charger. Okay, so carry on. They're, Conti- continue. they're a sponsor, so they, they, that's uh... <laughs> so that's a great charger to <laughs> yes, use. Exactly. <laughs> it booted up. It took a second to oh, like okay. when I turned it on. Like it didn't turn on right away. Like it did some weird thing. I thought you were gonna say it didn't turn on. No, it turned okay. on. Uh, long story short, it's operational. I can play games on it fine, but the touch screen doesn't work anymore that's really really bizarre. yeah that i don't understand i it's like other than that completely functional i did I, you know i turned it off and turned it on again you know the first thing you got to do is part of the sticker touching it <laughs> it's touching the, it should be on the bezel right so it shouldn't affect anything else i'm also noticing that your b button is not doing what the b button's supposed to do what do you mean like, if I hit the B button, it's bringing up the browser. What? It's supposed to bring up the side menu. The B button? Yeah. If you hit B enough times, it should bring up the side menu. I, did, I didn't know that. I learned something today. <laughs> is something touch, Is something pressing? No. Isn't there a way to, like, calibrate the... The touchscreen? Inputs, yeah. Yeah, there's a way to calibrate the inputs, but I didn't see any way to calibrate the touchscreen. Mm, okay. Okay. Press the Steam button a couple times. For for why? Is that what's being held down? Input devices. You did this already. Yeah, I didn't see anything for the... Yeah, there's nothing specifically for the touchscreen. Yeah. Uh, you might have burnt out the chip controlling the touchscreen. Wouldn't that affect the entire screen in general? That sounds like... No. Uh, he's talking about the digitizer. Hmm. Let's not be a doom and gloom just yet here. I bet something's just being held down or pressed. Because like I've I've used like the touchscreen was working perfectly fine up mm-hmm. until the battery died. Well. Okay. Here's <laughs> here's your homework. Uh, okay. Kill the battery again. Okay. And then use the Steam Deck charger to uh resuscitate it. Okay. That'd be my suggestion. All the right. the other thing is maybe this side of the bezel is like this side of the of the sticker you put on is like mm-hmm. touching. Maybe? Okay. 
I don't want to peel off your whole sticker, but right. first do that. Okay. Then maybe take off the sticker around the edges, like put something under it and pick it Got up it. a little bit. Yeah. Cause I feel like that might, it might be something as dumb as that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the, sh- the deck is shy and doesn't want to be touched right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say, uh, kill the battery first. Okay. Cause I don't want to ruin your nice, beautiful, uh, uh, sticker job. Yeah. That I, you can see the, the crease in it. Cause I don't know how to put it on properly. <laughs> All right, there you go. But you potentially put it on so bad that it ruined the touch screen. <laughs> um, uh, well, anyway. It, enabling battery storage modes just fixed the problem. The I, hell is that? I think that was one of the suggestions for when you... Uh, oh, when I fried the first one? When you fried the first one. Okay. Yeah. And that didn't work for the yeah. first one. But that's a completely different issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could try that. Mm. But... Again, I would say just kill the battery. I'm going to try your thing first. Uh, anyway, uh, Summer Gamer, thanks for the 16 months. Uh, and Rock and Val, hello, thanks for the 63 months. Uh, oh, and Ill- Illmaster, thanks for the six months. Oh, no, Will broke another handheld. Yep, it's just going to keep happening. We almost didn't have a show today because in the middle of the day, uh, Pacini was here. Yes. We, were, we set up the cameras. We were ready to film something. Mm-hmm. I was in front of the camera, mic on. Practicing my lines, power went out. Oh, there was a thunderstorm. Yeah, power went out for about two hours, maybe. <laughs> right as he left, because we couldn't film when the power went. Yeah. Out. Right as he left, we we were like, once you leave, the power's gonna come back on, <laughs> and it came right back. Nice. Uh, so that could happen again, and if it does, you're gonna have a really short show. Yeah. There was a slight chance we were gonna have a throwback show where we did it. Yeah. At our parents' house. Um, but anyway, also, if the power goes out, there's also a chance that we may still be here just in, <laughs> just with no cameras, but everything else might still yeah. work. So, <laughs> so join us for this wild ride that we're yes. about to go. We don't on. know what's going to happen. There's a couple things we need to talk about today. Yes. Uh, we want to talk about GameStop because there's two things that they did. That's pretty bad. One yes. of them is, uh, shut down game and former with no uh, uh, lead up and no seemingly no reason, mm-hmm. uh, firing a bunch of people that yeah. we know that uh, just suddenly lost their jobs. They woke up on a Monday and just didn't have a job yeah. anymore. Um, what else? Uh, oh, also, this isn't in here, but I'll put it here. Uh, they're giving away free Pokemon cards, yes. but apparently they're not free, and you got to pay for them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we got that to talk about. Also, romhacking.net has been shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a bunch of other, other, bu- other stuff. A jamboree of other bullshit. That you might find interesting, or you might not. In which case, just, you know, don't watch us. And don't watch us. Yeah. Do something else. But before we talk about that, PlayStation Plus. Yes. October is upon, not October, August. August is upon us, that one. Uh, so that means PlayStation is giving you free games if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus. These are your PlayStation Plus essentials for the month of August 2024. Uh, they're all available starting today, and they are uh, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga for PS4 and PS5, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach for PS4 and PS5, and Ender Lilies uh, for PS4. Everyone's favorite Ender Lilies. I've heard of that game before. Never heard of it. Don't know anything else beyond that. <laughs> 2D action RPG. Okay, sounds like something I will never the play. The Skywalker Saga. Pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that's like big, that's the big, big one. Deal. That's all nine movies, and like the Lego games are like infinitely replayable. So I do I did want to play this, but I just never had like the time. Like because this is the one you want. Yeah, this, this is, is everything. The, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's don't care. Yeah, I've, I've heard this game is genuinely yeah, genuinely awful. Genuinely okay. bad. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, is it like an offshoot or is it? A mainline Five Nights at Freddy's game. I th- I don't want to go into like what's an offshoot and what's a mainline because like then that all attract like the lore people. Well, that's what I, that's what I'm trying. My to My understanding it is um it's in the universe ninth uh, main installment. I didn't know there were nine. Well, he farted out the first five in like two years. So my understanding is this is I guess it's a mainline series, but like you don't play as like the security guard, you play as like a kid stuck in uh 
the Freddy Fazbear's establishment and you're trying to like survive till the morning. Okay. Or like escape. Okay. And it's like it's full 3D, so it's like it's first person. Yeah, I remember this one being different. Yeah. Because the other one is just it's static. It's static. Yeah. You're standing there and just moving your head kind of. Yeah. Anyway, uh cool. I mean you get uh one cool game. Uh yeah. And then also Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo has graced us with a game for Switch Online plus expansion pack. It's a Pokemon game, but not any of the Pokemon games you actually want. It's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. Somebody came into my chat and said, Bob, breaking news. Uh, there's a Pokemon game on Nintendo Switch Online. And I said, oh, it's going to be a dumb one. <laughs> and uh, guess and I, what? And guess what? So people love Mystery Dungeon. Yeah. I got no clue why. I played the the DX one or whatever yeah. for uh for that came out on the Switch. Game is fucking god awful. <laughs> it's not like it's first of all, that's mm -hmm. a that's a remaster. Mm -hmm. So with new graphics and stuff. But it feels like a shitty old Game Boy Advance game. Right. And I like Game Boy Advance games. Mm -hmm. This is a shitty old Game Boy Advance game yeah. that they farted onto the Switch. Now this, maybe it's a little better because you it's an it actual is, Game Boy Advance game. It's actually Game Boy Advance. You're not fucking around. Yeah. You know what you're getting here. Now, what's interesting here is like, you know, like all Pokemon games, this is um this is a twofer. Cuz there was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team that was on the Game Boy Advance, but then there was Blue Rescue Team which was on the DS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's weird. So, are they going to release that one? in the future i'm hoping they put some ds stuff on nintendo switch online that would you know that would be cool that would make sense you know the switch can run it or is it one of those things where they're saving it for the switch 2 yeah i think that they're gonna have uh yeah i mean at least gamecube stuff on the switch yeah too, uh and i think that might include some ds stuff mm -hmm. as as well uh Anyway, when, when this game came out on the Switch, so it was Pokemon Rescue Team DX is the one that came out on right. the Switch. It was, I, I guess, an amalgamation of both red and blue, I guess. Yeah. Um, My understanding is they didn't really do too much different with the DS version. It was just on the DS. Yeah. Um, That got a 69 on Metacritic. Oh, uh, nice. The Switch version. And I think that is the highest rated Mystery Dungeon game. Yeah, the one for the Switch. Yeah, because the the, the the original versions got a sixty two on the DS and a sixty seven on the GBA. Yeah, uh, and again, people love these games. They're 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 beloved, but I think it's just like you went to the store with your mom. Uh huh. You wanted Pokemon. This was the cheaper Pokemon. <laughs> you got it, mm -hmm. and you were happy with it. Yeah, because it's all you had, and it's all you can get. Now we're grown adults with our own money. I would never spend my own money right. on a game like this. So, I mean, it's part of your Nintendo Switch Online subscription. You could try it out. Yeah. Uh, see what all the hubbub's about. I promise you, there is the hubbub is for not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Monkey, thank you for the six months. Hey, gents, love the pod. Oh, my God. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, what else? Oh, that's it. That's all that's the free it. games. Uh, we're going to talk for a while now about why GameStop is bad. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why GameStop is bad. I have a couple. This this is uh this is the latest one. This is the latest. All one. right. Let's go into the latest one. Okay. Our 33-year legacy deserves a genuine goodbye. Game Informer staff tweets one last goodbye after all of their work was deleted, then GameStop nukes the account from Orbit. Uh last week GameStop abruptly shut down its long-running gaming magazine Game Informer. The staff was blindsided by the news when they got to work on Friday morning. All 13 employees were laid off on the spot, and the next magazine issue, which was nearly complete, will not be finished. 13 employees is They're not a lot. No. I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh, GameStop announced the shutdown on the official Game, uh, Game Informer Twitter account with a goodbye statement thanking readers for being a part of its epic quest. Uh, Game Informer staff suggested they had nothing to do with this brief, uh, cringy statement that read like chat GPT output soon after they were alarmed to find that the entire game informer website had disappeared years and years of articles have been replaced with with the same GameStop statement uh, this morning that would be uh, yesterday actually uh, game the game informer Twitter account went active again 
This time, a former Game Informer staffer seemingly took the reins one last time to share a proper fa- farewell. This I did not know about. Yeah, uh, the quote. Our 33-year legacy deserves a genuine goodbye written by a former Game Informer member. Uh, we're heartbroken by the shutdown of our publication, yet we leave with pride knowing we are por- knowing we poured everything we had into it. Uh, in the words of our editor-in-chief, be well, play well. And then you can see the tweet attached uh, to the post were images of the Game Informer masthead um, as of the magazine's closure. A lean staff of 13 helming what was once one of the most popular publications in the U.S. Uh, as visit the- Alex Van Aken visits Hoshino Coffee every trip to Japan. Okay, I need to. You're going to write that down? Write that- okay. Uh, f- as noted by, Destruct- by Destructoid's Eric Van Allen, uh, soon after the post was published... Both it and the entire Game Informer Twitter account disappeared. The account no longer exists, just like the website. It seems GameStop didn't appreciate Game Informer wanting to go out on its own terms. Wow. Uh, while GameStop continues its closure of its course of erasing uh, Game Informer's footprint from the internet, former GI staff at the independent publication MinMax are planning a celebration of the publication's legacy with a series of videos and podcasts. For what it's worth, I've seen Hoshino Coffee, and it's it's a chain. Oh, okay. It's like an IHOP. Take it back. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, what's terrible about this is how sudden it was. Yeah, uh, they they had no idea this was happening, and now all they all of a sudden they 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 don't get to have a job. They don't, it, and then it just makes it even worse is the the continued erasure of it from the face of. You know, from the face of the earth. Yeah, there's a lot of gaming history here that we're never going to see again. A lot like, of gaming like, history here. A lot of people's work that just doesn't exist anymore that, like, they can't use to show off to potential future employers. Yeah, like, if I worked here, I wouldn't think to have it all in a portfolio somewhere. Yeah. It's online. Yeah. Just link to the pages where where my work is, you yeah. know, and that's not going to work. You know, it's, yeah. it's just gone. So if you're a journalist or if you got your portfolio linked to other websites, uh, now is your... Uh, yeah. Now is a call to <laughs> make sure you save that all locally. Um, but no, Game Informer always had cover stories every month. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times it was exclusive stuff. And it was the first time we were seeing stuff from certain games. Yeah. So uh, it, there's a lot of that stuff that's just erased from the internet. And the yeah. only way you can find it now is if you have the physical copies of these magazines. And what sucks too is because there was a lot of content on the website that didn't make it to the physical magazines. Like more exclusive content, mm-hmm. video work, you know, other like op-eds and opinion pieces that just isn't there anymore so i'll say that i think it doesn't make sense for gamestop to have had game informer for this long i think that gamestop owning them stopped making sense around like 2008 like right back in the day it made a lot of sense the only place to go get your games was gamestop uh, mm-hmm. uh, you can get them at like Best Buy and stuff, but if you're a gamer and you want the latest games, and you want to know all the cool stuff about games. Yeah. You go to GameStop. You want to know everything as it as it happens. You get the magazine, and then then now you're on the forefront of gaming, because back then you couldn't just go on the internet and learn about everything. Right. Uh, companies would go to Game Informer and Edge Magazine and all those magazines, and they would give them exclusive information about the upcoming games, and that's how you would learn about all the stuff coming out. You would. You wouldn't hear anything about E3 yeah. until you read a magazine about it a month or two later. Yeah. Uh, and that's when Game Informer made sense. But, you know, as stuff, as the internet progressed and as it became easier for these companies to just make a tweet announcing stuff, uh, it made less sense for GameStop to force you to buy a subscription to a physical magazine. Right. It would make more sense for Game Informer to either go independent or to be primarily online. Right. But GameStop held their their they tied the fucking magazine subscription so heavily to their own uh reward subscription that it ruined both things. Yeah. It ruined the customer experience at GameStop and the 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 the, the, the journalism outlet magazine thing. Yeah. Because it forced Game Informer to use an antiquated media. Yeah. 
and you know i'm not gonna say that like you know magazines don't have their place in the world anymore like they do but it's a much smaller uh foot foothold than they had you know t even 10 years ago so forcing a physical magazine subscription onto customers was of course the wrong course of action but this is easily something that could have stayed active and online you know for years to come it was a small staff of 13 that's not you know a lot of people to employ they kept the company running for long after you know games uh gamestop even cared about yeah. game informer so it just it just seems like a move that like reeks of like you know nobody knows what they're doing over there there are people who prefer a physical magazine yeah and and, and i understand that but i think that the people I, I think that a majority of people don't and a majority of people who say that they prefer a physical magazine are lying <laughs> and don't have a subscription and will not read the magazine just right. say that they prefer older antiquated media because it sounds cool right but you're not gonna actually wait till you get the thing in the mail mm -hmm. and pick it up and read it on the toilet you're gonna fucking look it up online well, and you're gonna read it online well again magazines now are like a niche thing yeah. there are there exists niche magazine like toy collector magazine is yeah. like a like they're a popular magazine for toy collectors you know they don't have a big circulation you don't see them on like you know the racks at like your stopping shops and whatnot because you know they're hyper focused like only yeah. like a select few people go out and get them game informer could have been that magazine if gamestop didn't have the mentality of like you have to have the same number of circulation that you had back in 2005 yeah you know that mentality doesn't work anymore like i have purchased magazines yeah i'll flip through it once not reading the whole thing right and i'm Getting all that information online later anyway, because it's a lot more convenient to yeah. just look at my phone than it is to flip through a, 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 a you know, antiquated media. Yeah. Um. Anyway, again, I don't think that there isn't a place for a physical magazine. It's just the way that they were forced to uh, position this uh, entire section of the company, Game Informer. Yeah. Uh. They were forced to position it in a way that just wouldn't have worked. Yeah. Uh, because GameStop fucked it all up. Mm -hmm. um, in the chat, we had Key Code who says GameStop employees are forced to push the membership, meaning the magazine. Yeah. Uh, I have read their jobs are threatened if they do not do scummy things. Uh, and that's why we're talking about this. Yeah. Because uh, I worked there for a while. Yeah. I don't remember how many years, but it was like 2008 yeah to like 2010 and then i worked there like once a month for like another two years or so mm -hmm. um so i know what that was like and it was miserable uh fortunately i worked at a GameStop that had a great manager and she didn't really care about me selling subscriptions and stuff uh but that doesn't mean she wasn't getting in trouble by the the higher ups right she she was able to she, she was well liked and she kind of yelled back at the at the higher ups yeah. when when things weren't going uh, all that great uh, in terms of subscriptions and stuff. So GameStop was forcing basically uh, forces all employees to try to get as many power up subscriptions as possible. That's the uh, the, the the rewards card that is paid for that gives you points and you get some stupid knickknacks on their website yeah. uh but more importantly it gives you 10 percent off of used games uh but the membership costs 15 dollars a month is it a month or a year uh i don't know actually. i think it's a year i have 50 dollars is a lot yeah for a month probably a year uh it's a year says mega dragon it's been a while so <laughs> there uh 15 dollars a year uh but it gets you 10 percent off of used games so right. what i would do oh and this this reward this $15 a year membership got you a monthly subscription to game informer magazine. Yeah. So we would sell it as a magazine subscription. But what I would do is if somebody bought $150 worth of used stuff, which didn't happen often because mm -hmm. we were like the least busy store on long Island. Uh, if someone bought $150 worth of used stuff, they, I would say, Hey, you got a free magazine subscription with this. Yeah. And it gets you 10% off of stuff for the rest of the year. 
that's the only time I would ever sell the subscription. Right. There's, I would never even try to push it on anybody. Yeah. There were some times when corporate would be around and you have to kind of like ham it up for yeah. them. But like that almost never happened to us. Um, and my manager didn't really care. Uh, she was, she was cool with it. There's other stuff though that they do like, uh, pre-orders. Yeah. Always that, forcing pre-orders. On always them. forcing pre-orders. So, uh, I would always like kind of be like, Hey, are you interested in the new call of duty? I could pre-order for you. Yeah. You know, everybody wanted call of duty. That would usually work. But, uh, what some game stops do is they will, uh, constantly pre-order stuff for you. So if you have a bunch of pre-orders, let's say you pre-ordered Call of Duty yeah. and you didn't come to pick it up, what these people would do is they would take your pre-order and pre-order something else right. so that it looks like you're constantly pre-ordering yeah. stuff. So you might show up at a GameStop and see that you got all this shit pre-ordered that doesn't make any sense. Or mm -hmm. maybe you put down more than $5 on a game. Let's say you put down $15 on a game. Yeah. They'll split that into three different pre-orders so that it looks like they, they got a bunch yeah. of stuff. There's all these different ways that employees would fuck with the system to make it look like they're doing better than they are, and it ends up being this weird culture to the to the consumers because they're either getting fucked over by being forced to get this subscription that they don't want, mm -hmm. or they're getting weird things pre-ordered under their name or something. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff like that. I've also seen customers straight up just get the subscription added to their purchase yeah. without them even knowing that that's mm -hmm. happening. Um, there was another thing where it was uh, warranties. They wanted us to, to sell warranties yeah. to people. Uh, I only ever sold warranties to moms who were buying Call of Duty or Madden because mm -hmm. the Xbox 360 used to eat, eat those yeah, discs yeah. if they played them too much. Uh, and I'd be like, hey, there's a $3 warranty if you, if you think your kids might break the end. They're like, oh yeah, they're going to break it. Put it on there. So that's how I would sell those. But, uh, Yes, uh, GameStop's corporate culture uh, kind of influ uh, incentivizes the uh, people who work there to fuck over customers. Uh, and here's an example of it that happened recently. Uh, GameStop is promoting right now. They got these Pokemon cards that are free. Free promo Pikachu in store. Totally free. Please come today while supplies last Wow, no purchase necessary. Hurry in. Would be nice if you buy some cards too. No purchase necessary. That's but it would important. be nice if you buy some cards too. Philly Beats You, friend of the show, says, uh, the GameStop I went to forced me to buy the newest products to get this free card. I had to spend $20 on two tins since they were the cheapest, newest products. One for myself and one for a giveaway. This is a complete lie that all GameStops do not follow. That doesn't surprise me at all. So, the promotion is come in and get a card. And we yeah. used to do stuff like that. Like, we would have, like, come in and, and get a, a, a fucking shiny Lugia. I don't know. A, like, lot of, a lot of stores do that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just to get you in the store. Yeah. Uh, this is a GameStop employee who just fucking was like, no, I want a sale. Like, yeah. it's ridiculous. Um, and I responded, GameStop shitty management encourages employees to lie and manipulate cons uh, customers to get their numbers up. It's amazing. There hasn't been an FTC investigation after all this time. Yeah. So again, I never really got in too much trouble for like not pushing all of the dumb sales stuff. Yeah. Uh, I did get yelled at once by a district manager because the day before the sales were bad and I wasn't even there and I yeah. wasn't even like a manager or anything. So I had no authority over anybody. So mm -hmm. I was like, why are you yelling at me? I wasn't <laughs> even there. And they're like, well, it's your store. And I was like, yeah. okay, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but yeah, I, I never really cared or got in trouble for this stuff, but I did see other employees lie and manipulate uh, customers to get their numbers higher and they were never questioned about their high numbers right but i know that they were do they were stealing from customers basically mm -hmm. they were just blatantly uh, manipulating customers into getting their own numbers yeah. up for no fucking reason these are all college students who are not being promoted yeah <laughs> it was just a an absolute waste um but again 
my own experience at GameStop wasn't so bad, but you were looking at uh, uh, other stores and other people's it's, experiences and the at the corporate culture, and you could see how yeah, uh, it's it seems bad. like you were the you were the exception yeah. to the general rule, which was also like I have a head on my shoulders. This is why I'm not trying to like right. fuck over customers because I'm looking at it from their perspective. Right, other people are being coaxed into fucking over. Well, customers. like you said, you know, most GameStop employees are like teenagers. Who are you know scared or nervous or whatever? They just think they have a cool job working at a video game store. Yeah, and like their boss is saying, like you have to do X, Y, and Z. And they're being incentivized to yeah. to be uh, weird about it. Yeah. Sardi so says, yeah, I had one employee try to do that for a Pokemon game code last year, but homie next to him said, no, it's free. Look at this email and pulled it up on their computer. Uh, I think Billy Beats said he uh. Someone said that they showed them, and then they were, they were like, "No, you have to buy something or something, something like that." I don't know. Yeah. Um, there was one time I manipulated a middle school kid. I'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, they used to come and hang out in the store all the time, and I said, "Hey, you want a free game? Go get me a Snickers from the Seven <laughs> Eleven." And he went and got Snickers and nice. came back, and I gave him like a pennied out PlayStation Two yeah. game or something that was free. Nice. So. There's my FTC violation. There's yeah. my con contribution. To I the mean, GameStop, GameStop lawsuit. used to do a lot of like weird things. Like, you know, you ever go into a GameStop, you see like the the dis the display games on the shelf. Those are like games you would have to like open yeah. up from the open up the seal. Yeah. So take the disc out and like display so it. it. It's very strange because yeah. there's like the new release section, which are marketing that they shipped the store yeah it's like a piece of paper that you put in a game case. yeah so it's a, it's not a real game mm -hmm. but then there's the new real there's the there's the uh the new section of yeah. all new games and those are real games that mm -hmm. we gutted yeah we opened up took the game and put on the wall it could very easily be a piece of marketing but instead yeah. they they made us open a brand new game and yeah. put it up there so yes you're referring to how People are mad yeah. when they go to buy a new game and it's the last copy. So it's the gutted one yeah. that's on the wall and the store would sell it as new. Yeah. And that's your job is to that's, sell it as new. It's that is when, you know, you would, like you said, penny out stock and like get rid of it. Most of the time you're supposed to ship that back to the manufacturer. Yeah. Game stops would like tell their employees to break the discs and throw it in the trash or like, oh, you so know, that would be damage systems. That would be the penny out. out stuff. Yeah. Uh, Mecha, who is it? Someone in the chat. Uh, Mecha Dragon, yeah. Bob, have you ever seen those dumpster divers at GameStop that you worked at? I've seen stories of people digging into their dumpsters. Yeah, because they used to throw out stuff all the time. Like, uh, yeah, Guitar Hero controllers. And there was, I worked there when it was the Guitar Hero Exodus, yeah. when <laughs> all of the games were uh, not selling good yeah. anymore, and people were trying to trade in their guitars, and we had too many guitars. Yeah. So people would just leave them in the store. They'd be like, I don't, I'm not taking these home. My wife yeah. won't let me take them home, so just take them. Uh there would be uh, strategy guides every week. Strategy guides would go in the trash. Yeah, I was the dumpster diver. I took everything off. Yeah, <laughs> until I realized these are dumb, and I I stopped taking some of this. Yeah. Um, we would try to give out like as much stuff as possible. Yeah. Because what are they gonna like? We what are they gonna do? Fire us? Okay. I I I'll, <laughs> I'll be all right. Um. I loved when new stores opened up because we would send the bad penny games to them to unload. <laughs> to unload our inventory. Um, I went to buy Crash on Switch to use and brought up the case. The dude tried to swap the case out for the crap GameStop case because it's the policy. And that's not a policy. Yeah. He then said, screw it, and gave me the real case. Maybe he just wanted to seem like he was doing me a solid. Uh, yeah, that's dumb. I would try to, if you wanted the case, I'd be, I I would ask. I would say, do you want the case or do you not care? Because yeah. some people don't care. Some people throw out the case. Some people yeah. just put it in a little DVD thing. Um, but I don't care. It's uh, I'm it's I f I fucking don't own GameStop. Like I don't yeah. care. I want the person who's in front of me to be happy. I don't care about the corporate overlords. I'm yeah. not. I'm in college. I'm not here forever. <laughs> You know? Anyway. Anyway, I had a good time. I just fucking hung out. Yeah. Uh, moms would come in and, and ask for the new Call of Duty. 
Uh, uh, you had that the, new uh, war you game. You had the experience that most people think they're getting when they when they work at a GameStop. You just hang out, talk about video games, and try to sell parents on like good video games versus bad ones. Yeah, but it, like it that's totally not fun. the norm. Yeah, you know, you heard all these like horror stories during the pandemic of like GameStop trying to weasel their way into being an essential uh empl- uh essential business because they sell uh they sell keyboards so they they're good for work from home people they're an essential business <laughs> you know telling employees like oh do a tiktok challenge and we'll take an hour off your uh your timesheet or whatever you i know? worked there it was either hurricane- they, do, they would do a lot of that they would do a lot of like weird like contests to like force employees to like you know maybe get you know an extra hour pay or like a day off or like yeah and they would they would yell at you if you you didn't do poorly if if you perform poorly i worked there i think it was during hurricane irene and we i was closing the store and we were closing early because it was a fucking hurricane and there was like a protocol like put to take the registers put them on top of the thing so that if, if it floods the registers don't get destroyed or whatever um and the guy who was at like the store next to mine mm-hmm. kept calling me and like asking what he's supposed to do, and yeah. I was like, "Dude, I don't, I, 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 I've never done this before. Yeah. I, I'm just, just do your best, like whatever." He, and he goes, "I gotta drive 45 minutes. I live on the coast, mm-hmm. and they're evacuating it, and I'm gonna miss the evacuation time. Like, like he's yeah. not gonna be able to get to his house to evacuate his house." Right. And I was like, "Dude." close the store and go yeah <laughs> and he's like no nah, i got I, I got a lot to do here still and i was like dude who fucking cares about the store <laughs> yeah. just go home that's your yeah. stuff and he's like okay okay and then 45 minutes later he calls me back he's like i think i got the registers disconnected i'm like dude <laughs> fucking leave everything how it is don't even lock yeah. up just go home what's the worst that could happen you lose your job you're gonna lose all of your yeah. stuff here fuck this place dude but that's like you know the mentality of fear that like they instill yeah. in their employees you know uh i brought up on the show before the the movie dumb money about the gamestop you know mm-hmm. meme stock situation and it actually does a really good job of showing like just how shitty you know games GameStop corporate treats, you know, the people who work at brick and mortar stores. Like there's a whole subplot about that. And like, I'm sure watching with my wife and going like, that's all true. That's yeah, they what really, it's like. They really don't know yeah. anything. There, there, there's a, uh, uh, Reggie was on the board. Yeah. Reggie fils was yeah. on the board. Nintendo's old. President. Long Island's own. Uh, he was on the board at GameStop after he retired from Nintendo. This was very recently. Mm-hmm. And he left the board and said, those people don't know anything about video games. Yeah. That's what he, that's what Reggie said about GameStop. Yeah. I do not like years ago, they tried to like diversify when people weren't buying games in store anymore. They bought Think Geek because yeah. the, the idea was, well, you know, we'll just diversify and do like, you know, adjacent stuff like geek culture stuff and that went tits up because like people there was the same mentality they had when selling video games and stuff applied now to funko pops and like shit like that i had a really bad experience with gamestop but <laughs> in 2021 do you remember what this? toy did you get i bought <laughs> i bought the ghostbusters i bought all four go- original ghostbusters because the the plasma series had come out and they were all on sale i'm like oh great i'm gonna get them for less than retail I bought them in January. It took me six months to get them all because they would send out one like a month late. And then I would just keep emailing them and like tweeting at them. Hey, what's going on with my order? Then I got another one. And then I just kept bother- like asking like, hey, it's been like how many months? And I, I, in like June of that year, I'm like, hey, it's been six months. Where are my other two figures? And GameStop emailed me back saying, here's your money back. We've canceled the order. And so, like, of course, so you only got half of. The- well, no, I complained about it on Twitter, like big time, and then GameStop privately messaged me. He's like, "Oh, we're so sorry. We're just gonna send you the figures." Yeah, but charge. like that's like, not that good should enough. not happen. That should not have happened. It should not have yeah. taken that long to get it four toys. But it should not take clout to do it either. And I don't even <laughs> have clout. This is me we're talking about here, not him me still you shouldn't have to publicly i know ad- address it for them to fix that issue and, that's an issue and there were like a lot of other like shitty things that happened along the way like you know one of the figures was out of stock that's why it took so long to send but then all of a sudden it was back on their website mm-hmm. 
and I said like, hey, this says it's in stock. Why aren't you sending it to me? Oh, that figure is in stock, not the one you ordered. You would have to buy that figure and then we would send it to you. Even though it's the same goddamn yeah. toy. And and it, it's because they're a bad company that they're not doing well. It's not yeah. because uh, physical media is dying. It's no. because they have really just had no relationship with customers whatsoever. And it just, it boggles the mind because it's very clear that they are a bad company. They're a poorly run company. Like all the individual stores are like doing worse and worse. And yet somehow they are still alive and they are still like making money on the stock market. They are so stock rich from that one fucking month in January of 2021 when they had all the meme stock and now all of a sudden like they're just riding that high thinking it'll happen again when it won't. Uh, Seth Hammer says, I remember when employees were fired for planking in store. Then at the manager conference during a presentation, a C-suite person made fun of it by taking a picture of planking in a store. It did not go over well. I planked in the store and took a picture of it. Yeah. I remember, so <laughs> if you're young, planking is when you just <laughs> were stiff as a board. Yeah. Just lying on something. That's it. And you just no, took a picture it. of it. We, and it's always funny. This is before TikTok. Also, every year they would have a conference where they'd fly all the managers of GameStop over to Texas. Yeah. Maybe that's why the company's dying because they spent all of their money on yeah. that shit. Um, yeah, somewhere I have a picture of me at a GameStop planking. And you know what? I didn't get fired. I think I put it on Facebook. Um, someone else in the in YouTube's chat said, did you ever uh, have to explain to parents about rated M games? Yes. When I worked at the Roosevelt Field Mall, I remember a uh, kid wanted uh, to buy the Ballad of Gay Tony, the, yeah. the like, collection with all of the yeah, yeah. Grand Theft Auto games. Um, and I was like, just so you know, it's rated M for uh, uh, violence and, and 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 stuff and they're like okay and i said and you see a dude's <laughs> dick in it and he's like they're like no they were not so i can't have this i said no i said there is full frontal male nudity yeah. and they're they like no no my son cannot see this yeah so that's where that's where the parents were at yeah. they didn't care if there was violence i had to explicitly say yeah. that there you see a dude's dick um, I guess that's all we have to say about shitting on GameStop. Uh, yeah. Um, I think bottom line, just don't don't shop there. Just don't shop there. There's just no reason to anymore. There's no there's, reason there's, to. There's, I have not gone into a GameStop in a really really long time. Yeah, it's I've, been a really long time since I've willingly gone into a GameStop. Same. I think yeah. the last time might have been I needed a pair of Joy Con. And I wanted to get the used ones when I made right. the gold Joy-Con in like 2017 or 2018. Yeah. That might have been the last time I willingly went into a My GameStop. last GameStop, I can't remember the last time I've been in a GameStop, but my last GameStop experience was the Ghostbusters situation. And I haven't haven't been back since. You know, and I don't think any any one of you listening or watching should do the same. They're not... You know, they're not a good company. Don't give them their business. This is a situation where it's okay if it goes out of business. Yeah. Because absolutely. the world will be better off without GameStop. Um I did I have shopped online though when they have some they have some sales. I've been tempted, but like I've I was so burned by the, the Ghostbuster situation. I'm just like, no, thank you. Now here's the contradiction. We're upset that a bunch of game journalists lost their jobs, but we're advocating for GameStop to <laughs> get shut well, down. Well, I mean, look. You see it all the time, like GameStop employees who work at the brick and mortar stores are shutting down the stores and quitting voluntarily. Yeah. They'll post signs on the on the door it's, saying like the whole staff quit. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable that uh a lot of stores are gonna get shut down. Yeah. They, they they made too many stores. Yeah. We I think we talked about this last week, how on Long Island there's two in every mall uh -huh. and one outside of every mall. And they've shut down most of them, yeah. I think, by now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a GameStop 
I think it's on Sunrise Highway. Yeah, it's close. It's uh, around it's, the it's, area. It's so <laughs> close. <laughs> There's one that is a standalone. Yeah. It's its own building. Yeah. And we're like, every time I drive by it, I'm like, this is the only standalone game <laughs> stop on Long Island. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember when GameStop had exclusive content for games. Uh, y- well, let's not go back to those days either. Yeah. Cause that was also, and that was a weird time because, like, you know, companies, the video game publishers would try to find ways to, you know, destroy the the used game market. Specifically, that was that's GameStop's cash cow. Um, and then they would also do things like, you know, free DLC if you pre-order at GameStop. Uh, did I thank Farmer Gooch for five dollars? Thank you so much. Um, that's it. We're done ranking on GameStop. Yeah. Uh, we need to talk about romhacking.net, but before we do that, oh, oh, backlog, 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 backlog. I have so much earwax in my left ear. I can't <laughs> hear or 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 think straight or talk. Oh God. Hey guys, it's backlog time. That's How you right. Doing? Good to see you. Uh, it's backlog. This is the part of the show where we go through our entire video game collection. Every game we've ever bought gets put into an Excel spreadsheet, and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. How many games do we have? Nine sixty-four. Nine sixty-four. That is seven. Number seven eighty-seven. Seven eighty-seven. And that is Assassin's Creed One for the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. So I play Guess the Game all the time. Yes. It's Guess the Dot Game is mm-hmm. the name of the website. Uh, and it's, you just guess, you, you're just guessing uh, uh, what game, it, it's like a Wordle type thing. Yeah, yeah. It shows you like a really close up zoomed in screenshot and you have to guess what the game is. And yeah. then every guess that you make, they show you a new screenshot. I want to say 50% of the time it's an Assassin's Creed game because there's just so many Assassin's Creed There's Creed a games. lot of them. Um, and this one is the first one. So we're going back to the beginning. Uh, so two, tw- 2007 released on the PS3, the Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows. Uh, yeah. Uh, Interesting game, I'll say. I remember when this was coming out. This had all the hype in the world because this was 2007. This was, you know, the Xbox 360 had been out for two years. The PS3 has been out for one year. This was, like, touted as the first real next-gen game. It's the spiritual successor to Prince of Persia, which everybody loved. Um, And, like, when it came out, it delivered. But I think people slowly realized, like, it could have been better. You know? I do know. Yeah. Sorry, my 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 little thing is not oh. my little well switcher is not working. Um, yeah, I don't really understand because it was extremely popular, but uh, it didn't really review that great, and people didn't like it that much. <laughs> well, I think at the time it it reviewed fairly well. I think it was only like one or two publications like gave it a bad review, and that and then you know people like came after them for it. But I think slowly over time people started to realize like the game isn't very polished the controls are clunky it got um, an 81 that's not so yeah bad. that's pretty good and then it was a situation where like when assassin's 3 2 came out they're like oh this is much better <laughs> yeah this was not a great game yeah but i remember enjoying it for the most part i would have given it like a 7 out of 10 yeah because i stopped playing towards the end of the game i stopped playing and then when the second one was coming out yeah i finished it yeah uh and I enjoyed what I played, but the beginning's cool and the end's cool. The middle is very boring. <laughs> it's the same thing over and over yeah, and over again. There's not a lot of good mission variety. There's no story um, at all in the middle. The controls are like very like cumbersome. They didn't really like refine it until like the next game and the game after that. Um, the the story was actually pretty shocking because spoiler alert, uh, the whole marketing campaign was built around you're an assassin um in uh where did, when did, where did this game take place somewhere in the middle east right yes uh, you're an assassin uh the game takes place in 1191 so it's well in the past it's very like well researched um 
it takes place in the Middle East and like places like Jerusalem. Um, and I liked that because it was yeah. a, it was very different for the time. Yeah, uh, to have a game set in that way, in, yeah. that, in that time period, in the, in that area, it was just uh, look at how gray it is. It was like yeah. pretty boring. The the architecture wasn't. It was all the same. It was all these broken down stone buildings. Right. But the twist came like right at the beginning. You find out that it actually takes place. Uh, in the present day, in 2012, uh, you play some doofus named Desmond Miles, and what they're actually doing is, in the future, this company is, like, scanning your brain to look at the memories of your ancestors to try and solve a mystery. Well, they tell you that in the very beginning of yeah, the game. Yeah, but uh, what the I'm game saying opens is, with that. they didn't market that at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, it caught people completely off guard that, like, this cool little assassin story is really just, you know, window dressing for the real story where uh, Bob lost the screen, so I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> Everything, everything's a disaster yeah. right now. Uh, it's the storm and GameStop. So yeah, <laughs> it was this really weird tw twist that like threw a lot of people off guard. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people loved it. I am mixed on it. Uh, um, Again, I at the time it for I just the most part. I just wanted to do the cool assassin stuff. Yeah, uh, I also enjoyed the cool assassin stuff. Yeah, I kind of really liked the Desmond story. A lot of people didn't, and they just wanted to play the game. Yeah, but I enjoyed uh, the 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 parts where you got sucked back to the present day, uh, and that story, the Desmond story, continued on to the second game. Right. Well, I think in this one, the Desmond story, like it was literally, you know, you'd wake up on the Animus, um, you'd go to bed. And then you wake up the next day and lay on the animus. Like, you didn't do anything yeah. aside from just sit there and listen to dialogue from Kristen Bell and the other guy. Yeah, but, like, I was always interested in that part. Like, like, like the I wanted to play the game more to hear more about that part of the right. story. Uh, I don't think that really did much for me in this game like it yeah. did for the second uh and, and yeah because it got the better, and better series yeah. of games i think it also didn't help that like the assassin you play in this altair like he wasn't very charismatic he wasn't very you know interesting he was there very no, much a flat figure there were no good characters in this game this yeah. game was very bland uh yeah or what it was i mean i think at the time there just weren't a lot of games uh, yeah. Well, again, this was the beginning of the generation. Yeah, this so, was Xbox this was, 360. This was like the first one to like really be like a next gen game because like it was a big open world. All the people walking around, the amount of detail and like the textures. Yeah, it and stuff. looks really good for yeah. Xbox for especially an early Xbox 360 game. But uh, it's just the colors are bland. Yeah, and and, and the architecture is all the same. Uh, also, like it takes place in the 1100s. Yeah. Uh. Why are all of the buildings already rubble? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like our memory of like what. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like they shouldn't, it shouldn't look like this. It should look better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're saying the game is bland. Like there were fun parts to it. Like sneaking around on top of buildings, doing the parkour stuff to like get away from uh, guards and outrun them. Yeah. Luckily uh, the gameplay loop was fun. actually planning assassinations and stuff like hiding in the crowd and like trying to like listen to like where your target's going to be. All that stuff was very fun. Yeah. This pioneered a lot of great stuff. It yeah. was very different, especially at the time. And a lot of games ended up stealing from this, especially a lot of Ubisoft. Games. Yeah. This... We're looking right now at you climbing a tower yep. to unlock part of the map. Yeah. This is the original Ubisoft game. Yeah. Not the original Ubisoft game, but like the original modern day Ubisoft game. Is this game. the first game you climb a tower to unlock the map? It's I think it might be. I think so. There's a word for that type of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but I remember researching this before. And there is, a, <laughs> there is like a Wikipedia page right. for uh, this, this style of gameplay. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, I'm glad this game exists because I do like some of the Assassin's Creed yeah. games. Uh, I think that uh, Assassin's Creed 2 is where it really got Yeah, Assassin's good. Creed 2. Like, uh, Assassin's Creed 2 is the game. You know, it's yeah. like sometimes with a video game series, the first one doesn't click, but the second one clicks and clicks hard. Like Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, Mega Man 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Street Fighter 2, 
like Assassin's Creed 2 is that game for this series. Yeah. Uh so I'm glad it exists. Yeah. Uh when did this come out? Uh November 2007. 2007. Yeah. So this style of combat also was uh I don't want to say um I always attributed this style of combat to uh to to Assassin's Creed. Yeah. But a lot of games ended up taking this style of combat. Yeah, I know you compare it a lot to the Arkham style of combat. I'm bringing up Arkham because I wanted to see when it came out. And it was 2009. Yeah. I mean, the Arkham combat is a lot much more faster. It's a yeah, it's, it's much more fluid. Definitely the, not a one to one. The combat in this one, like, it's definitely much like it's very counter heavy, but like it's much more slow and like yeah. timing based, and like you have to actually sit there and like wait. Whereas in Arkham, it's like much snappier. Yeah. You know, this I think this tried to replicate the feel of an actual sword fight rather than like trying to just beat the shit out of somebody as fast as you can. Yeah, but even at the time, there weren't a lot of games that were doing this where yeah. where uh, you. Uh, punch 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 and then like like you press attack press attack press attack and then you press dodge or parry yeah. and, uh, when when uh, a shape appears over their head yeah a parry shape um plus i feel like they kind of made the combat in this game like intentionally bad because a lot of stealth games at the time were like would make their combat intentionally bad so that yeah. you don't engage in combat you find other ways to solve your problems because like the big thing about this game like part of the marketing was the hidden blade which was you know the blade on your wrist that would shoot out so you can like sneakily stab a guy and this game there weren't a lot of use cases for like it was very limited it was really you had to sneak up behind somebody and stab them or like jump off of something high and stab them. you couldn't do it in combat you couldn't do it by like just walking past them like you can in assassin's creed 2 mm-hmm. so like even like the marquee feature of the game was like severely limited in what you can do with it yeah it was assassin's creed 2 where the combat got really good in yeah. this you can see when you counter it does a cutscene. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a little. I mean strange. that that kind of like stayed with throughout the series, but like it it just felt like felt wrong in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's hard to recommend this game in particular. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat was like, "Why haven't they remade this game?" Honestly, this is the game to remake if they're going to remake yeah. the Assassin's Creed game. I know Ezio is like their their. He's their the more favorite, famous one. Yeah. Their favorite uh character to mm-hmm. to to do stuff with. But uh, this game, I think, desperately needs a remake. And, and they've, like, toyed around with, like, uh, this game. Like, they've had this character in other games yeah. before. Um, but I think Assassin's Creed Mirage is, like, the closest you're going to get to, like, them dipping their toes back into this game. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's hard to recommend because it's not nearly as good as, like, the other stuff. It's not as fleshed out. But, uh, yeah. It served its purpose. It opened the door. It, it, it did uh, have a lot in it that worked well, and it paved the way for some iteration that worked a little better mm-hmm. later on. So yeah, thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Oh, wait, did this game give us a red ring of death? No, the second one did. Second one. Second one. We got a lot to say about the second one. <laughs> thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Uh, come to a podcast sometime. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. All right, everyone else, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you to Dante's Gambit for the Prime. Thanks for AJ, 76 months. Fuck GameStop. Big Daddy Mayhem, thanks for the 21 months. And Geek Guy, thanks for the 12 months. Love you, Pappy Bob and Pappy Will. What is your go-to sick meals? It depends on the type of sick. Yeah. Sometimes, if I'm not feeling good, I need a greasy sandwich or something. I yeah. need something with like a lot of carbs. Sometimes, if I'm like pukey, I want I don't fucking want anything yeah. to do with that. Uh, you know what I always want when I'm sick? Gatorade. That's like, a sick person. Yeah, but but like always, like it doesn't matter what type of sick I am, like Gatorade, like I physically need it. Like I feel like it helps me. In some weird way. I used to get an Arizona iced tea and a Snickers and I would be ready to go yeah. no matter what. <laughs> um all right. Let's talk about 
romhacking.net real quick. Okay. So if you don't know romhacking.net, it was a website where you could get a bunch of ROM hacks. Uh, I do not think there were ROMs on the site or it was, it was discouraged to have ROMs on the site. Uh, they had the hacks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these ROM hacks uh, required you to patch the ROM that you already have. So uh, nothing like overtly illegal was going on on this mm -hmm. website. Um, it was just a place to share different hacks and stuff uh, and different things you could do with all of your retro games. Uh, it was a great resource and it's seemingly gone. And when I heard about this at first, I was scared because I thought this was Nintendo was doing because they had been shutting down everything. Yeah. And this really upset me. But then I learned it was the owner's uh, kind of uh, own doing. He, decided, he just decided he didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a letter from him. I keep forgetting that my little switcher here stopped working. This is a big, long letter from him. Uh, Wario64 tweeted, romhacking.net is shutting down moves to news only database and file archive released to internet archive. Now that's how you shut down a website. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking put it in archive only mode. Uh, all submissions other than news are permanently closed. All sections of the site will remain up as read only. Downloads and images will be available for as long as uh, some people will allow it. A uh, forum will remain up. Twitter and Discord affiliations have ended. Uh, and there's a big long thing here. I don't want to read the whole thing. Um, but for the for the most part, it just seems like it's been a lot of work for this person to keep up the website, and he just doesn't want to keep up the yeah. website anymore. Um, it's not fun for him anymore. He doesn't want to do it. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable reason to shut something down like this. Yeah. Uh, in the middle, after I tweeted about this, I guess I sort of like glanced over a sentence or two in the middle where he talks about how he was doxxed and that's part of why he decided to close things mm -hmm. down. Uh, I discovered a dishonest and hate-filled group. I learned that I had been dehumanized for a very long time. My personal details had been given out. Secret deceitful plots had been carried out, uh, had cut me out and drop a bomb like I am a target to destroy. My family has seen this, and after discussion, we are immediately seizing all related site operations. The plan was for him to give the reins over to somebody else, because he mm -hmm. just didn't want to handle it anymore. Yeah. And it turns out the people he was giving the reins over to, there was some, some argument that uh, seemed weird to him, and he just decided, forget it, I'm shutting the whole thing down. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Now, people pointed that out to me that he's been doxxed. And I was like, right. okay, well, obviously that's not cool. And then people came to me and was like, he wasn't doxxed. It turns out uh, he just didn't like the Discord mods. And he's, right. this guy's actually a big asshole. <laughs> and then I read a big diatribe from one of the Discord mods. And it seems like the guy for like the past year has been really hard to talk to yeah. because he's hasn't been wanting to work on this. He's 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 been doing his own thing. He he want he doesn't want anything to do with this. Um, and the Discord mods were mad that he wasn't talking. I'm ve I'm paraphrasing profusely here. Yeah. Uh, the Discord mods didn't like how he wasn't being communicative. So I think the doxing was them trying to reach him, and he was like, "Hey, man." Stop sharing my personal information because, right. I mean, they shouldn't have been yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to reach him if he didn't want to be reached. I understand, like, this, this is people's lives. Like, people really cherish this site. People, mm -hmm. like, put a lot of work into their, their ROM hacks that they put on this site. But, man, leave this fucking guy alone. It's not that important. Make <laughs> yeah. your own goddamn site if it's that important to you. Um, so, yeah, it seems like there was just a major falling out. And that's why this website is shutting down. And right. uh, it says Discord and Twitter affiliations have ended because the Discord mods uh, are completely separate from the guy who ran the site. Right. Because uh, he wants nothing to do with them. So. There was way more than that. He was never doxxed. I don't know who to believe. And honestly, I'm, if I'm just guessing here based on all the stuff that I've read, it seems like uh, the... 
people who were running th it seems like the guy who who was paying the server fee who ran the site and the people who were running the discord or were trying to take over the site it seems like they were button heads and they yeah. and they, they had to cease operations but it seems like the people who were like running the discord and were trying to take over were being a little too much that's yeah. what it seems like to me so he should have been more communicative now who, for why it's his site make your own site <laughs> if you're upset that he's not being communicative i mean like it would I, in a way it's like good customer service if you would just like you know talk to there's no like customers you know what I mean, like yeah, but that's the thing is that there's no yeah. paid anything here. Right, and he he owes nobody anything. Leave the fucking guy alone. If he's not talking to you, you gotta just stop using his service. Right, because it's a free service. He has no obligation to help anybody. Yeah. So I don't blame him for shutting down the whole thing. Put all your stuff somewhere else, honestly. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of other places resources for that. My favorite because I do a lot of Mario stuff. Super Mario World Central. Great for Mario World ROM hacks. There you go. Anyway. Uh, I had a doctor prescribe me a Gatorade diet for a few days while I had a stomach flu. That's weird. Diet? Like like a like oh, drinking Gatorade. Okay. Like the diet right. of having Gatorade. Right. Okay. For a second there, I thought diet Gatorade, but like Yeah, I was the, that came into my head too, and yeah. I was like, that doesn't exist. All right, more stories. Yes. Uh, Braid anniversary sold like dog shit. That's yes. what you wrote. That well, that's what Jonathan Blow, the developer, said. Oh, <laughs> okay. Braid developer Jonathan Blow has said the recently released anniversary edition of his indie puzzle platformer has sold horribly, and indicated it is he is now struggling to employ staff full time. Blow, uh, who also created The Witness, catapulted into the upper echelons of indie video game development after Braid enjoyed enormous success on Xbox Live in. 2008 uh it's since become one of the greatest indie games of all time with a number of perfect review scores under its belt 16 years later in may 2024 blow released a remaster with a fully repainted artwork new puzzles uh and in-depth commentary across pc switch ps4 and ps5 xbox one and series x and s also android and ios and a mobile version released by netflix uh, the anniversary edition was announced during the Sony State of Play in August of 2020. Uh, as surface user, as surfaced by users on Reset Era, a YouTube channel called Blowfan, good name, uh, published a, comp a compilation of commentary from Blow on Braid Anniversary Edition sales performance uh, made during a number of live streams in the month since launch. While Blow fails to confirm a sales figure, a picture he paints is clear. Braid Anniversary Edition has flopped. In one stream dated June 17th, Blow said that the Anniversary Edition has sold horribly. It, so it has sold like dog shit compared to what we need to make for the company to survive, he continued. So the future is uncertain, let's put it that way. Why, you, why is the whole company's future riding on an anniversary collection? That is a very weird thing. Anniversary edition of one game, yeah. not a collection. Uh, then on June, uh, June 21st, Blow was asked again about the sales. No, they've been terrible, he replied. Utterly terrible. Uh, in another stream dated July 22nd, uh, he said uh, he said releasing Braid Anniversary Edition on so many platforms made a difference, but the problem is most of these platforms are fucking dead now. Uh, Steam is easily still our biggest platform, he continued. Uh, there would have been something to be said for just not porting to half of those platforms. It's a... Uh, it's a really interesting thing that we did. We did commentary in a way that nobody's ever done it uh, at much more at a much more thorough level than anybody's ever done it. Uh, and at some point, you just have to know that what you what you did was a good thing, even if the world even if the world doesn't really acknowledge it. And this is one of those cases, I think. What? It's it's not that deep. <laughs> you just released your game on a lot of platforms, a game that is old now and that everybody has already. <laughs> Then, in a stream on July 27th, Blow again addressed the Braid Anniversary Edition sales, but this time cast doubt on the company's ability to employ staff. Responding to a question on how many people at his company were working on the compiler for programming language Jai full-time, 
Uh, Blow said none because we can't afford to pay anyone because sales are bad. The whole games industry is having a hard time, he said. Blow's comments have sparked something of an inquest online about why the anniversary edition has struggled. In one stream, Blow discounted the impact that bringing the game to conventions and putting it in front of people might have had on the success of the game, saying cons don't do much to help promote video games. He also said promoting the game on podcasts and YouTube interviews wouldn't have helped either. There were others who suggest that there ha there was little demand for a Braid remaster in the first place with the original perfectly playable still all these years later. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blow Studio is... Uh, Wait, did he have anything to say about that? Because that's the reason. No. <laughs> uh... Blow Studio is uh, Thick Claw Inc., uh, which uh, also developed uh, 2016's The Witness. It is said to be working on a number of unannounced projects, including a VR game. Oh, okay. So they're making stuff. They're making stuff, but it sounds like they're they're having a hard time making stuff because they had they put all their eggs in the anniversary edition basket. That's so weird. Yeah, like I don't think that's a side thing. The the idea of like the Braid Anniversary Edition is not a bad idea because it's not on Switch, it's not on uh, PS4, or PS5, or modern Xbox systems. Yeah, but you're not gonna have a resurgence of the game. Yeah, like, like it's it's not for like Braid's the type of game like you play once or like you play a couple times like in its initial release window and you're like, oh okay, I get it now. This is a good game. You don't like you know play it over and over again. Yeah, you know the, the way you do like some of these other games. So, yeah, it's not it's not the game you ride your whole company on. It's the game you do. Well, it's a game you make if you need to, like, do, like, a round of fundraising, I guess you could say. But not a lot of fundraising. Well, so he, he I think the company's just doing bad. And he needs an excuse for it. Yeah. Because he's not taking any of the other criticism seriously at all. Yeah. So uh, it's very bizarre. Uh, it's very bizarre to, like put put the shortcomings of your entire company on an anniversary edition of a of a game that's uh right. many years old by now. Um that's so weird. Hope their next game does good. The Witness did yeah. good. The Witness did uh well as far as I know. That, see I, that the Witness should hold you over till the next game comes out. I think the thing too, well he takes a long time in between games cuz he's like one of those auteur perfectionists so like everything has to be like perfect in oh, his you way. Oh, say. Yeah. Uh f I mean like I'm sure they put a lot of the work into the anniversary. From what edition. I understand, the anniversary edition is very good. Like the the graphics have been redone to be more high resolution, uh, with more detail. Uh, the commentary track is insightful and stuff. But like, you know, it's braid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. Like, whatever. Uh, hey, Xbox updated their Discord app. Yes. They sure did. Uh, Microsoft and Discord are greatly improving the integration of the communications platform into Xbox consoles. Uh, while, you, while you've been able to stream your gameplay to friends over Discord since last year, you'll soon be able to watch your friends' streams, whether you're streaming uh, gameplay from a PC, mobile phone, or an Xbox. Xbox insiders will be the first to get access to viewing Discord streams today uh, with the feature showing up in Discord inside Discord voice calls, and in the Happening Now friends section on the Xbox dashboard. If your friends are talking or streaming in Discord servers, um, the channel will also be shown in this section. Uh, while Much like while streams on the Discord app, much like watching streams on the Discord app, you'll be able to mute a friend stream or control the volume with the Xbox integration. Uh, the stream itself will open in full screen, uh, but natively within Xbox, within the Xbox dashboard experience and won't require a separate app. The Xbox and Discord integration is also being improved to support direct calls to friends, so you won't have to join a Discord server call to get chatting. Microsoft and Discord are also improving the information you see about Discord friends on Xbox with the ability to see mutual servers and friends and Xbox gamer tags. This is more than what PlayStation has. Uh, Sony also recently improved its Discord integration on PS5 to finally allow owners to join voice calls directly from the console. PS5 version still lacks the ability to stream gameplay to friends or watch friends streams. Yes. Yeah. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. That PlayStation Sony owns part of yeah. Discord. And I just think Microsoft's better at making software. Yeah. So their integration is better. Uh, so now there's really no reason to use the default party chat on either of these systems that's so awesome i remember it, like i have like a streaming setup so like when i play games with other people 
I use Discord, and it's yeah. so nice to use Discord. It's so easy to use, especially like I used to play a lot more Switch games than I do now. Yeah, but we would play them through Discord, and the Switch didn't have. It, it still doesn't have a chat yeah. thing. Some games do, but but not a lot of the popular ones. You would need to use an app on your phone to yeah. do it. Um, so I would always play all of my games through Discord. I even play PlayStation like four games yeah. off of Discord. Uh, and when I would play with some of my normie friends who uh, you know, don't have a streaming setup, it was difficult because yeah. you have to have two audio devices going through your headphones. Yeah. And that's not easy for for most people to set up. So it's taken this long. You yeah, know, I used to do that fucking in like 20, what, 16? I used to yeah. do that. Uh, 2015. Uh, yeah, 2014 and 2015 is when I used to use yeah. Discord like that. Uh, taking 10 years for consoles to finally get Discord. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, PK plays games. Thank you for the five months. Forgot to sub last month. Well, thanks for remembering. Yeah. Uh, next news, God of War Studio working on a new IP. Oh, we like that. Sony Santa Monica is reportedly working on its first new IP since the God of War series in, 20, in 2005. Wow. According to an employee's LinkedIn profile in the About section, they came back to Sony Santa Monica as a character supervisor, looking after the entire character development pipeline on a new IP. Previously, they worked at both Naughty Dog and Sony Santa Monica before going to Striking Distance Studios to work on the Callisto Protocol and Unknown Worlds for the next Subnautica game. Uh, after the launch of God of War Ragnarok on PS4 and PS5 in uh, 2022, producer Corey Balrog said the studio was working on many different projects. However, he didn't provide specifics on any of them. Sony Santa Monica was also reportedly working on an open world sci-fi game before it was canceled. It seems like we may not see the new IP for a while, as Sony has already said that there won't be any major franchise uh, games until April 2025 at the earliest. In the meantime, God of War Ragnarok is coming to PC September 19th, and PS5 fans can still look forward to games like Astrobot, Concord, and Lego Horizon Adventure later this year. Uh, this, I feel bad for this LinkedIn yeah. person. <laughs> like, you're just trying to put something on your portfolio, and now people are writing articles about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's interesting that like now they're like trying to branch out and do other things. Like all the other PlayStation Studios like have more than one ip through their name i love this yeah because this is I good don't necessarily love god of war but i think that they can make good games yeah like i like i i think that there's room for something that i would be interested in yeah know? absolutely so um this is exciting yeah it's, and it's nice to know they're not just gonna be the god of war studio forever i didn't know they've been making god of war since god of war started <sighs> that's insane I mean, I haven't played Ragnarok, from, but from my understanding, it's like the final chapter in this like new modern God of War saga. Okay. So if, if that's a good place to end it on, then why not you know start something new? Yeah. Go off and do something else. I fully like, support that. Maybe a few years down the road, do another God of War. Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally down with that. Uh, great news. Um, Bungie layoffs. This is bad news. This is bad news. This uh, is bad news. I really liked the first Destiny. Yeah. Destiny 2 was all right. I didn't it didn't capture me as much as the first one. And yeah. all of the DLC for the first one, I liked a lot of what what, what I was playing. Um second one not so much. I fell off pretty pretty quick. Um it's really upsetting what has been happening with Bungie. Like yeah. I feel like they uh had Activision down their throats and then they went independent and then they went part owned by sony yeah and it seems like they just can't their management can't figure things out yeah uh f let's read the article uh developers at bungie have spoken out about what uh led to the studio's newest round of layoffs earlier this week uh which had re uh, reportedly been planned for some time talking to bloomberg current and former staff at bungie uh, say bungie grew too fast and overextended itself with potential projects they also put much of their ire on ceo pete parsons who reportedly failed to take accountability for his part in these cuts. Following these new layoffs, several former Bungie employees and Destiny 2 players actively called on Parsons to resign, alleging he was to blame for the studio's overly ambitious failures. According to the outlet, Bungie received an influx of cash after Sony acquired it in 2022. The developer immediately went to work on incubating various projects, including an alleged mobile version of Destiny 2 and remakes of its older games. Uh, one notable project was Payback, 
described as a co-op spinoff influenced by Genshin Impact and Warframe. The title was canceled in June to work on an extraction shooter revival of Marathon, now aiming for a 2025 launch. That's crazy. I had no idea they were working on something else because yeah. they're working on a lot of yeah. more stuff than they probably should. Uh, payback was reportedly uh, helmed by longtime Destiny 2 co-director uh, Luke Smith and franchise VP uh, Mark Noseworthy. Both have been with Bungie for over a decade and left at the project's cancellation along with several top executives. I, I heard that they were fired. So. Oh, well, something something ain't right over there. Yeah. We know that already. Uh, as the game industry has uh, as the game in industry has laying off thousands in 2023, Bungie had other troubles to contend with. Destiny 2 Lifefall disappointed commercially, and the studio later delayed the final shape following its first reduction in October. The final shape has been out for around two months, uh, but a recent company meeting claims it missed its sales targets. In fact, sales of each Destiny 2 expansion have declined every year, though it's unclear when that starting point was. Uh, at the time of writing, it's unclear what Bungie's new cuts mean for Destiny 2 and Marathon. The former reportedly faced heavy losses in its narrative, audio, and support departments. Uh, it's further claimed the sci-fi shooter will go away with your will do away with yearly expansions in favor of free small content drops to draw in new players and overhauls to long existing modes. I remember what, uh, before the final shape came out, like they said, a lot was riding on that game. Yeah, well, I remember that you too. know, people had, like that needed to do well for in order for Bungie to maintain its independence. Um, it didn't do well, and what they said was going to happen uh, did happen. Sony took more control of Bungie, moved staff over to another studio to work on other games, and now you know they're basically overseeing the reins of what Bungie does. It's interesting that this article says sales of each Destiny 2 expansion have declined every year. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Is that not I normal? Mean, like for, for Usually it is. A game... Like as you, a, a game people are gonna lose interest in yeah. the game as it as it gets older. I mean, you got like some fringe cases like World of Warcraft, yeah. where where people just I keep guess like they were looking for like some level of consistency. Like the the drop off must have been really severe in order for this to. Have been I think the with case. Destiny two, the drop off was probably immediate. Yeah, because personally, I played the game and then I never played it again. I, yeah. years later, I jumped back in and the game was completely different and I didn't uh, enjoy myself. Yeah. Um. I think that Destiny 1 was amazing and I loved it. It reviewed not that great, yeah. but it was immensely popular and people had a lot of criticisms of it, but they were still playing it. Right. And I think that they listened to all of the criticisms and and fixed fixed the game with those criticisms in mind mm -hmm. and that actively made the game worse. I don't think people actually knew what they wanted and uh -huh. it ruined the game mm -hmm. and it carried over into the second game. And uh, now here we are uh, with, with, with this. Yeah. I think that uh, sometimes don't listen to the fans too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Uh, it doesn't help. This article doesn't say, but it links to it. Um, Pete Parsons, the CEO uh, I was found that he was spending like over two million dollars on uh, used cars. Used cars? Yeah, like he was buying like fancy cars at auctions. Like he, with company money? Uh well, somehow he he got like two million dollars to like just buy all these cars. I'd no, imagine I, that's his own money. I'm not like, saying he should be making a lot of money. It's unclear if the million spent on the collection uh, came from the Sony buyout or Parsons' lifelong work at Bungie, and the amount would uh, have likely uh, been a drop in the bucket compared to the massive cuts being asked of the studio as a whole. That's a weird thing to add to the article. You don't know where he got that money from. I mean, but this adds questions. Like, why is he, why is he spending all these money on cars when, like, some of the, their employees are, like, fearing for their jobs? Yeah, but he, he would also, like brag about you know the purchase he was making while like these other the people under him were like worried about whether or not they would be employed he i think he should definitely not be making a lot of money if you're mm -hmm. going to be firing this many people you yeah. should try to suck it up you made the mistake you should try to uh take your pay cut so that other yeah. people can still have a livelihood but him doing whatever he wants with his own personal money shouldn't be in an article about a, a video game <laughs> you know that's weird that's it could be maybe a relative died and you got $2 million. You know, we don't know. 
That's just a weird personal thing to put in an article like that. If if they had said in the article he previously made this much money last year, I'd understand because he shouldn't be making a lot of money when the whole company is failing. Well, it was asked- like when they take bonuses even when the company's failing, that's a huge problem. I mean, chances are Yes, because it, it was asked if uh, Parsons or other executives would take pay cuts and miss the season. During the first round of layoffs, would he yeah. take pay cuts? Like, and they, he said no. Yeah. So yeah, That's not cool. Yeah. That's not cool. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, he's still there? He's still there. Okay. He well, shouldn't be like there. That. Anyway, I haven't been liking Destiny. I'm... Uh, excited for marathon but i guess i don't know it doesn't look like i don't know they i know how to i wish marathon company. had a single player campaign so i'd be more interested in it but it i like the multiplayer right um you know what i've been playing i i i've been dabbling in this game called uh first descendant it's uh oh, that's the one with the waifus it's the waifu style destiny game it's basically yeah. just destiny it's right. got all a lot of similarities to destiny mm-hmm. but you could unlock waifus and uh it's pretty good it's kind of scratching the destiny. Issue. Right. I haven't been playing too much of it, but anyway, uh, hey, here's a cool new Xbox controller. I mean, it look, it's it's a really cool looking controller. It is cool. That's uh, that's like very much like I, I saw early some hate 2000. for this. <gasps> I don't I will, know. I, I, I think them it up. looks awesome. This looks great. This is early two thousands aesthetic, right there. People wanted atomic purple, but they gave us one on the Xbox One era. I really? have it. Really? Atomic purple? See-through? Yeah. Wow. I, I think they call it like magenta or whatever, but like it's it's atomic purple. I like this color too. This is yeah. like a Mac. This is like an old iMac. Yeah, absolutely. There's an original Xbox controller, like the controller S that like is the same color. Sky Cypher. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. I like this I, a lot. I want if, this. If I needed a controller, this would be the I had to buy something at Target Online and this was in my cart and my wife saw it and I'm like, let me just put that over <laughs> right now. Because like, look... <sighs> Controllers are expensive. Like this controller retails for seventy dollars, and because it's a special edition color, that means it's like five to ten dollars more than like a standard Xbox controller. That's ridiculous. I don't approve of this. I would pay. I would pay extra money for this. The problem is, I'm going to have to pay money the money for this because this is a color that's going to sell out immediately. So I think that's worth the extra couple of bucks. Yeah. If I, it's red, like just a red controller, no. Yeah. But if it's see through, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, if this was added to the customizer on online, yeah, that's what they got to do. If this was an elite controller, now we're talking. That, that's what they got to do. They got to start adding transparent colors to the design lab. It It's pretty hard to, to, to do something I like know, that. but like, fucking come on. <laughs> Charge more. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Xbox earnings, once again, boosted by a blizzard. Yes. Uh, Activision Blizzard again helped Microsoft's gaming division in its latest financial results despite significant decline in Xbox hardware sales. Over the three months ended uh, for the three months ended uh, for, for the three months ended June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Weird sentence. Gaming <laughs> revenue was up forty four percent year over year. Microsoft said on Tuesday, um, which includes forty eight points of net impact from Activision with. Without the acquisition, gaming revenue would have been down 4%. I want to say this before we forget. Jacado in the chat says, Speaking of Marathon, Classic Marathon 1 and 2, they're recently on Steam for free. Yeah, they're always on. So They've been available for free for years. Go so. check that out if you, if you have Steam. Uh, first game with, to use Mouse Look. Yes. Uh, Xbox hardware revenue declined 42% year over year, but Xbox content and service revenue, uh, which includes Game Pass, was up by 61% this quarter. Again, majority of this, 58 points of net impact, came from Activision Blizzard. Speaking during a web call following the earnings release, uh, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella claimed its gaming division uh, now has over 500 million monthly active users across platforms and devices. Our content pipeline has never been stronger, he said. We previewed a record 30 new titles at our showcase this quarter. 18 of them, such as Call of Duty Black Ops 6, will be available on Game Pass. Game Pass Ultimate subscribers can now stream games directly on devices they already have, uh, including, as of last month, Fire TVs. Uh, Finally, we are bringing our IP to new audiences. 
Fallout made its debut as a TV show on Amazon Prime this quarter. It was the second most watched show on the platform ever, and hours played on Game Pass for Fallout have increased nearly five times. Earlier this month, Microsoft raised Game Pass prices and announced plans to introduce a new standard subscription tier that doesn't include day one releases. Modern Warfare 3 also became the first Call of Duty game to be added to the subscription service, while Black Ops 6 will be the first Call of Duty title to launch day one when it's released on October 25th. The first Activision Blizzard game to be added to Game Pass was Diablo 4 in March 28th. According to the latest sales data from research firm uh, Circana, Xbox Series consoles are tracking 13% behind where the Xbox One was during the same time period of its life cycle in the U.S. market. Microsoft has already confirmed it's working on a new Xbox hardware and claimed that it has some exciting stuff coming out in the hardware that uh, we're going to share this holiday. It seems like their sales are up because of Activision. Yes. But keep in mind, they spent $70 billion. Yes. So they have to make that. Back. Well, so, it looks like Activision is making that back. Activision is actively on their way to make it back. Yeah. I don't know if they've made it back. Every already. every other part of Microsoft <laughs> is is having a problem here. Yes. Also, uh interestingly, Intel is not doing too well. <laughs> so. Uh neither is Nvidia. I don't, I don't know if they I think they were um No, Nvidia fucking i think is like selling think it's like the biggest company in the world i know right but like their stock crashed like yesterday like it's gonna crash because there's no reason for them to biggest to be the biggest yes, company in the world i know <laughs> it's artificially inflated because of artificial intelligence yes uh it will well, come back to normal that's eventually. what i'm saying like the people are saying the reason why the stock market crashed yesterday was because like uh wall street is getting skittish on ai because people realize that yeah it's not uh, uh taught the way of the future yeah What's a Marathon Classic Infinity? I'm adding them all to my library. I now, think so that, that's the third game. I'm it's, adding them all so yeah. that I, I don't miss out on the free. Oh, it's just coming soon. That one's not out yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're also free on iOS. Oh. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, oh, last news. Okay. Uh, Valve working on new project with a code name fans are liking, are linking to Half Life. So the code uh, name, Project White Sands. So this is a multi-part story. Uh, brace yourself. Uh, there's a chance that by the time you read this, uh, Natasha Ch- uh, Chandel's website has already been uh, revised. But right now, if you scroll down to the voiceover section of her website, uh, you'll see a reference to a Project White Sands video game. Uh, Chandel did not name the characters she provided work for, but the project is clearly marketed as belonging to Valve. As noted by members of the Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit, White Sands is much more likely to pertain to the Half-Life 3 than, say, Left 4 Dead Free, not least because White Sands is a park in New Mexico, the state uh, where Black Mesa was. Uh, oh, God. I don't think that. I think that's extremely loose. Uh, f- well, f- hold on. It's it's a ride. Okay. Uh, there are... Con- there are the kind of leaks that are always fun, a legitimate firsthand source that isn't filtered through uh, some influencer trying to vague post for engagement, one commenter said. Just a voice actor who probably has never heard of Steam uh, nonchalantly mentioning they did work on Half-Life 3. Uh, these are all comments and stuff people left. Uh, so an update, Natasha Shandell's website is currently down after exceeding bandwidth limits just before the site went down and have been updated and all references to Project White Sand have been scrubbed. Now, that article was posted on August 5th. On Later on August 5th, uh, following yes, oh, sorry, it was posted on August 4th. On August 5th, um, following yesterday's report of Half-Life could be developing a new Half-Life game, Valve expert Tyler McVicker has stepped forward to say that he believes it's true. Codenamed HLX, McVicker oh. asserts the new game uh, seems to be a fully-fledged non-VR Half-Life game, something that seems too good to be true. Uh, f- almost everything uh, you're about to hear is real, not speculation, and comes directly from data mines of Valve's recent updates, McVicker said at the start of his video. Uh, Valve and the team behind Half-Life Alex started pre-production on another single-player title, title or, uh, around the same time as Half-Life Alex. We found out the code name of the title, uh, and, sorry, we found out the code name of the title in 2021, HLX. Uh, there were arguments at there were arguments at the time and a few uh, following years that HLX uh, wasn't actually representative of a full-fledged game in development, 
but maybe could represent an engine feature uh, or was just a file format for saves. Uh, in the interim, I believe, uh, in the interim, I've been slowly and silently digging into the story. HLX is a confusing one. HLX seems to be a fully fledged non VR Half Life game, something that seems too good to be true and something that I want to be uh, very sure of before going live with any of this information. Uh, McVicker adds that as Valve is actively developing many titles on Source, perhaps most notably Citadel, aka Neon Prime, aka Deadlock. For a while, he couldn't be sure what HLX was. Half-Life Alex was announced almost five years ago and fully released four over four years ago. And as it turns out, that entire team has uh, that entire team has been spent developing the next major single-player title, codenamed HLX. And now, thanks to a screw up by one of the voice actors on the project, we now know the internal code name Valve uses to hide real projects on uh, thus. He's confirming that Project White Sands is the same thing as HLX, which right. is potentially a new Half-Life game. Interestingly, McVicker points out that while a lot, like a lot of studios, Valve uses very random code names such as Hot Dog for Left 4 Dead um, and uh, Jamiroquai for Half-Life Alex. So why is this one so candidly associated with the Half-Life series? We're not sure. McVicker has since learned a lot about the project via data mining. Uh, according to strings inside the game, uh, Dota 2, the characters you play as uh, in whatever HLX is wears an ATV suit and will go off world uh, where there are workers, storks, um, pentatanks, uh, feral man hacks, and the there's fuck? a lot of a stuff lot of here. X names. Yeah. McVicker reckons these things were initially cut from Half Life Alex, but have continued to receive some form of development according to the most recent updates to Valve's Source 2 projects. Do I think this is Half Life 3? McVicker adds. I got to be very careful in answering that question. This but is, yes. This is Valve expert Tyler McVicker. How yes. is he a Valve expert? I don't know. I don't know how he got that title. That's quite a, quite a title. Yes. But. Internet personality. Okay. Okay. Aren't we all? <laughs> uh, okay. And that was a lot. And I, I know I jumbled my reading there, but it, it looks like. It kind of just seems like some guy said, yeah, it's real. I, look. That's what it kind of just. I, I don't think we're under the impression that Valve isn't working on a Half-Life game. They're, they're always working on stuff. Everybody yeah, the there question is, is how far along exactly is it? because they could cancel it at any time. I think there were reports that like ever. the original version of Half Life Three was fairly long in development before they canceled it for one reason or another. You know, I think that uh, they're not going to make a Half Life Three unless they can make it like the biggest thing ever. Yeah, you know, and and, and Valve is not uh, above just canceling it if they don't think it's going to be the biggest. Well, thing I mean, ever. like everybody. Everybody thought like the reason why we hadn't gotten half like three X is they were waiting waiting for like the next like big step in gaming technology. And everyone thought that was gonna be VR. And we yeah. got a Half Life game, but we didn't get the Half Life game. Yeah, and the reason it wasn't the Half Life game is because VR didn't catch on too much. Right. If VR was like the biggest thing, then Half Life Alex would be the biggest thing, but nobody right. really cared too much because nobody wanted to strap on a VR headset. Um it is one of it's renowned as one of the best VR experiences that yes. exists. It's just who wants to strap on a headset. I know. Um somebody in the chat, oh, uh Pam in the chat says, but didn't they say they only bring out another half life if they can create something with a new engine like physics or source engine or something? Yeah, I'd imagine a new Half Life would come along with advancements to their engine. Well, we're somewhere. already on like, like the big advancements. We're already on like the second or third version of the Source engine. If they make a Half Life three, it has to be a tech demo for some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. You know. All right, that's all the news. Yes, it's time. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This is by ASDF underscore 8765, and it is a guy playing Taiko no Tatsujin with his cock. <laughs> this play? I mean, he's doing pretty good. There you go. <laughs> ah! Yeah! It's me. Why did that turn off? All right. Uh, he is doing good. Yeah. It's my spirit animal. 
All right, now we're talking to you guys. Yes! Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. 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 <laughs> hey, where are all those people? I got it up. Uh, We got... What do we got? We got... Booms of Dooms, who says, as a dad of two toddlers, Will randomly bringing up Bluey in a video game conversation to prove a point is the most horrible thing. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Bluey is not a show for kids that adults enjoy. Bluey is a show for adults that happens to be appropriate for all ages. So I hear great things. It's, it's fantastic. More Tarot says, two hours of free content. We don't deserve you. That's a glowing endorsement yeah. of this podcast. Moon Nom says, what's the best way to get into Mega Man? I have the Legacy Collection, but Mega Man 1 was not very fun, so I put it down and never picked it back up. The best way to get into Mega Man is play Mega Man X, period, end of story. And if you like it, play other stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you have the Legacy Collection, start with like two or three yeah. and like see how you feel about that. And if you don't like those, go later in the series. Just pick a random yeah. one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But I think Mega Man X, the first one, is great. Mm -hmm. Just play that. Um, I never played Mario 64 when I was younger. Oh, this is from Aaron. Uh, I never played Mario 64 when I was younger. I played it for the first time when it came to Switch. I usually don't have much patience for old games, but I got all 120 stars and loved it. That's very interesting. Yeah. Mario 64 has aged, but it's aged gracefully. It's definitely not unplayable. That's very interesting to hear. Yeah. I mean, that's good to know that, like, you know, a game that has aged is still able to be played and enjoyed by people. That's a good perspective to have yeah. because that was the whole argument. Yeah. Was, would somebody enjoy this playing it now? It's a little different uh, if you are old enough to have played games around that time. Yeah. Uh, but still. Uh, Matthew Cantrell says, a uh, top movie for me is Speed Racer. It should have had a sequel. A lot of people love that Speed Racer movie. I know. Like, I remember watching it back in the day, and I'm thinking to myself, this is just nonsense. What the hell is going on? But now it's like getting like reevaluated as like a lost masterpiece, and I got to go back and watch that movie because like I certainly missed something. <laughs> uh now we're in the chats yes uh jacato says i started with Mega Man x1 and it was the perfect introduction to general Mega Man gameplay Mega Man 2 is solid for classic Mega Man as well uh more so than Mega Man 1 yeah i hear 2 is good i actually yeah. never played 2 i only played a 1 and then 3 um my wife and I are coming to Long Island Retro for the first time and looking forward to seeing your panel. Oh, my God. Our panel, 730, Creative yes. Radiation, Panel Room 2. I don't know which room that is. I don't know either. We'll find it. I didn't know there's more than one. <laughs> I thought there was just the one room. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I didn't. Sorry, Dark Spider. I didn't go to the PO Box. <laughs> but I did last week, and somebody sent us this. Uh, let me read it. Yeah, you Dark were. Spider, I should have had you go get the... I should have also asked you to get the Cobra Commander Once a Man figure, because that was a really bad time trying to get it on Hasbro Pulse, let me tell you. I got it, but not fun. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Ooh. I've been a fan... This is from Seth Eisenberg. Uh, from, Where's the knife? Um, what's MD? Maryland. Maryland. Where is the... Oh, it's right here. Uh, I've been a fan of your YouTube videos for a few years and have really enjoyed your reviews of retro emulation systems and DIY videos all around the same time I got into Russ's videos at Retro Game Corp. A few weeks ago, I took my family on a two-week trip to Japan. When I saw the attached article of Sora News on Sora News, I knew I had to get my hands on the magazine, and then I realized what a cool, unique gift it would make for my favorite retro gaming YouTubers. I'm sending one to Russ as well. Don't tell him. Enjoy. And if you decide to do the papercraft on video, please let me know. I haven't tried to I haven't tried it yet, and I'm not very handy. I have a feeling it will involve copious amounts of Google training. Thank you for so many hours of informative entertainment. Thank you very much, Seth Eisenberg. Yeah, so it looks like you get a paper craft uh, 
Ninten any, uh, Nintendo Famicom. Oh my god. Which is cool. It looks Wait, like that it, looks real. It looks like this might be like full size. Because that's like the full size of the controller. The pictures that he attached here, they look, it looks like, yeah. I mean, it's, this is just like a photocopy basically, right. but it looks like a real Famicom. Well, you'll have but to it, like put this made together. You, uh, he also sent you a magazine, which we talked oh, about. Oh, we love magazines. love magazines. I love magazines. Oh, boy, th these are actually cool stickers. Here. And uh, this box Nintendo World Championship uh, uh, ad. Yeah. I also got this box, which I don't know what's in it, but I'm gonna open it and hope it doesn't have a snake. <laughs> is this? Did he say what magazine this is? And I just didn't hear him. Oh, oh, what? I gotta be careful. There's a lot of pieces here. What is? This? That's not the paper crap. <laughs> no, this this looks like an actual controller. Interesting. Yeah, it looks like an actual controller with like. Here, can it you... might make sounds. Uh, I don't know. Can you read any of this? Let me see. It, 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 look at the magazine. It's on the front of the magazine. Okay. Uh, Kwami. Kwami. Computer. Un contoro. Nope. <laughs> it's a Famicom controller. That's all right. It says. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Super Mario. Something. Right. Yeah, I think this is, uh, we can make sounds and stuff. I mean, it's not right now. Maybe there's a tab you got to... Oh, there's a battery. There's a straight-up controller. Yeah, it's got a big old speed. Well, didn't yeah. the original have, like, a mic in it? Yeah. But I think the Player 2 one had a mic in it. Player 1 didn't. Uh, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, that's how, uh, that's how you scare the Poles voice in The Legend of Zelda. You blow into the microphone and it scares <laughs> them away. Thank you. Yeah. This is very cool. Uh, Davy Clunes, thank you for the ten dollars. Rarely make it to a live, but love the pod and the YouTube channel. Grew up playing games with my little bro, and I'm in a similar place in life as Will. So the pod is always just a bit of a comfy place. Thanks. Oh my god. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Also, we've had this sitting here for a while. Uh, this is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not even gonna open it. It's Ape It Do. They sent me, uh, it's their SN30 Pro, which is a controller that I like a lot. It has Hall Effect joysticks now. Yay. Cool. Everything's Hall Effect. Yeah. They also sent me uh, the numpad for the keyboard. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, are you guys saying anything? Hey, Wolf Bros. I'm flying into New York City for the weekend tomorrow. Best retro game store to check out while I'm in the city. Well, you should head over to Long Island for yeah, uh, for one day for a Long Island Retro yeah. Gaming Expo this Friday at 7:30. You got a lot of retro games yeah. that you can get over there. Uh, otherwise, in the city, uh, J and L Game is great. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of the city. Um, that's it. There's video games in New York, but uh. Every retro game store in the city is expensive. Yeah. So you're really just going there to look at things and go, wow. And that's it. Uh, Snake Eater, how do you how do you all keep track of every single game you've ever bought? There's random games I play as a teen and absolutely don't remember, like random X-Men games. Uh, have y'all... Have you all been keeping an Excel sheet for 20 years? Have you ever... Have you never traded in or sold your games? Um, so back in the day, IGN actually had a games collection feature. And this was back like when we were in high school and I actually, we didn't have as many games then. Uh, so one day I just took the time and went through every game we had and added it to the, to IGN's collection. And I just kept do every time we bought a game, I would just do it and do it and do it. Um, and then they added an export to Excel feature. So I did that. 
and then one day the feature was just gone. Like they didn't have the games library feature anymore. But I kept the Excel sheet and I just kept adding games to it over and over again. And then I would just, you know, I ported it from computer to computer and then I finally put it in Google Docs and here we are now. It, the format of it is still very similar to what it was all those years ago. Yeah, I still got to add a bunch of Nintendo Switch stuff, but yeah. I added all my Steam stuff. I think, I think you did, yeah. Uh, Bob and Will, how can we find you two at Long Island Retro? Can we take pictures and things just from you guys? If you see us, just if you, yell I us. will be wearing the hat. Look for the hat. Ah! Ah! I turned the light on. Um, <laughs> let's. So we will have a panel at seven thirty in panel room two on mm -hmm. Friday. I will only be there on Friday because I only want to go there for one day. I will be there Saturday afternoon as well. Okay. So if you, ah, I probably won't be, but okay. maybe I will be. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. Um, panel is at seven thirty. Uh, you will definitely be able to talk to us after mm -hmm. potentially. Maybe we'll cut the panel early so that people can come up to us. Because uh, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes they don't like us creating a crowd. Um, but you will be able to talk to us after the panel, for sure. Um, what else? Uh, I think you should keep the Switch games off the list until the Switch 2 comes out. Why? No. <laughs> That's weird. It's hard with digital games because like, you forget you buy them. And like those add up quickly, especially yeah. like Steam. I'm only putting games on there that I bought and like I have a lot of games that I like just got the key for and yeah. just put it on and then never played so it. I'm like, not putting those games on there. If I buy games at Long Island Retro Gaming Expo, I'm going to put them on the in the list because right. the physical games they just get put in the list. Steam games, my rule for that is I have to play a significant amount of the game before i can put it on the list because otherwise it's just gonna sit there and like i randomly have to talk about some dumbass game i got for free well for no reason like yeah, dead yeah. island riptide i got that game for free i haven't played it i i don't know shit about it it might as well just be a nebulous thing that's not a very interesting story sometimes yeah. we'll buy a random game for no reason and that will have an interesting story yeah at least there's yeah at least there's a reason for that yeah like uh, NBA, NCAA Basketball 2003 for the Xbox. Yes. Did an episode on that. Go watch that one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you Google that, we will be the first ones to come because nobody's <laughs> fucking playing that game. Yeah. It feels weird putting modern console games on the backlog. I mean, the back people's backlog has have modern stuff. Yeah. That's the whole purpose is that yeah. it spans, it transcends time. Bob, got any big video ideas coming up soon or mod project? Uh, I have a video coming up Thursday. There you go. That's it. There you go. It's a kind of a mod project. Uh, also, will do you? Also, will you do pre-orders for your controller? No. I'm trying my best not to because I don't like pre-sale. I think right. it creates problems that are only bad for everybody the benefit is that i get everyone's money <laughs> and the downside is uh you don't have your money and there could be a lot of production problems that are now your problem because you don't have the money and i do i think you know? it's created like a bad uh a bad ecosystem where like people will companies will force pre-orders on you for everything yeah and like, you know, because it was hard to get things for a couple of years now with the pandemic and supply chain issues and whatnot, like that uh, mentality has carried over to now. So companies don't make enough for everyone. They just make a limited amount. And if you don't get the pre-order, that's on you. You were too slow. Well, it's that, I mean, a lot of people do Kickstarters for products like the yeah. like controller. Um and there's a lot of problem Kickstarters. And, right. And I don't want to do that. Right. And a lot, no, I, a lot of things can change also. Yeah. Like I know I have, I have the idea for the thing. I know how much around how much I want to sell it for. Uh, and we're working on it. So I could put it up right now and say, 
pre-order this now and will mm-hmm. come out eventually. But then I'll have a million people be like, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? Yeah. Hey, you missed the deadline, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather incur all of those problems silently by myself so that you don't have to worry about it. Right. You know? Also, I can, you know, front the money for it. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be in the red for a little bit. Because I just, it's just something I want to do whether other people want it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Davy Clunes with uh, first super chat on the live stream. Uh, rarely make it, uh, rarely make the live, but love the pod and the I, YouTube channel. That. You did. I oh. Read that. Um, Never mind. Silent Mongo says, remember the Panda controller? I do, but you know what? I want to commend them because they refunded everybody. Well, thank you for the read from the Wolverine comic you shared on Twitter. I liked having the insight when watching Deadpool and Wolverine yesterday. Yeah, I saw somebody somebody posted like a picture of a uh, spoiler alert for Deadpool versus Wolverine. A picture of Wolverine like uh, crucified on the X and like, what's your hot take? What's your like movie hot take that'll get you in this situation? And I said was most people who go see Deadpool versus Wolverine won't know what that's a reference to won't bother to look it up and if they do look it up they're not gonna f- read the comic that that's from as me yeah so as me and but like that sucks <laughs> you know <laughs> that that's an empty reference to something that has no real meaning or context for a lot of people and it has no real meaning in, or context within the context of the movie outside of like Hey, look at this cool thing. You know, like you look at a film like The Dark Knight, which references the stack of money from Long Halloween, um, but they do it in a way that like actually makes sense within the context of the story. It's not just trying to recreate the comic book panel. They found a way to remix it for the purposes of their story. Like that's yeah. a good reference. I mean, Deadpool was just a lot of, hey, look at this thing. Yeah. The whole movie. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want but if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service be it apple podcast youtube podcast spotify audible.com but no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that's a placement on all of those respective platforms uh i am rating beta 64 he's watch- he's playing mario sunshine go say hello to him i'll be back on thursday to stream something uh, I will have a video up on Thursday about uh, this little adapter that I made to make my Nintendo Switch into a little weird-looking clamshell. <laughs> See y'all later. Bye. Bye